Okay, so we are going to look at uh, brucellosis, which is one of the commonest um, um, zoonotic diseases that affect uh, humans, basically. So this, together with other uh, diseases that we look at this series, uh, commonly also affect humans. So these are going to be the areas that we're going to focus on. Uh, organism um, characteristics, basically, the epidemiology of the disease, transmission, uh, clinical manifestation, diagnosis, then we go up to treatment and prevention. So in terms of a brief history, basically this uh, disease uh, was first described by uh, a British army physician who was known as uh, David Bruce. So he was a microbiologist and at that time um, the name Brucella was not there. So actually Brucella comes from the name Bruce and then Cella, basically Brucella, and at that time it was just discovered as Micrococcus militensis. As you'll see, the structure it, it um, of Brucella it is it is um, a coca in a way. Okay, so uh, Sir David Bruce was the first person to actually describe it, and hence the name Brucella. Then we had another um, veterinarian, veterinarian actually who um, also worked. Um, on um, a lot of uh, animals, and he was able to link now the organism to some of the conditions that are seen in cattle, sheep, and horses. So he was called Band, and actually there's a there's um diagnostic tests that is done uh, in animals uh, to actually see uh, whether there is a brucella actually in milk. <clears throat> so in in short, basically, brucella is a bacterial disease uh, which is caused by uh, members of the genus Brucella, and it's also sometimes referred to as a Malta fever or undulating fever, or sometimes Mediterranean fever. So it is, as I said earlier, it is one of the commonest zoonotic diseases worldwide. So to look at the organism itself, as I said, Brucella basically is a um, gram-negative cocobacilli, and as you can see, it's a the cocobacilli basically it has a structure like a cocci and like a rod so that's why it's called a cocobacilli it's gram negative it's non motile and it's non spore forming okay so normally this uh, organism or this um, brucella occurs in different uh, several kinds of species uh, but maybe we'll just mention a couple of them like brucella abortus militensis uh, brucella suis and canis. However, there are others uh, that are there apart from these four. Okay, so this uh, organism, um, one very important thing is that it is primarily an obligate intercellular pathogen. And you will see that normally it likes living inside the um, macrophages or going to the reticular endothelial system in places like the lymph nodes, the liver, the spleen, and the bone marrow. So that is their their natural habitat, where they like staying. So that's why we're saying they are obligate intracellular pathogens. So the reservoir, like where uh, they, they, the, the, they stay and they're made available, it depends on which kind of species we're talking about. The different species would have different reservoirs that they like. So they have some sort of specificity in their uh, reservoirs. So, for example, Melitensis, uh, Brucella Melitensis, will normally like affecting uh, goats and sheep. And then aborters will fancy cattle. Then Swiss will fancy uh, swines. Uh, we, we had mentioned earlier about Brucella canis that are found mostly on, uh, in dogs. So the animals that are infected, such as uh, the common reservoirs, basically, that um, provide the brucella, which is going to ultimately affect human, uh, is, are the ones that uh, stay in cattle, goat, sheep, and swine. So human beings get this disease primarily uh, from the animal, so either directly or indirectly. So brucella is transmitted in uh, the following ways, uh, through ingestion, either direct contact or by breathing, in some of the bacteria that is inhalation or accidental inoculation. So these are just some of the ways, like if you drink uh, some of the milk product, uh, the milk itself or milk product that has the bacteria, and then we end up ingesting. Um, if you get into direct contact while handling, 
um, tissues of animals, you get it. Okay, and the other way that you've just talked about. So the ingestion, as I've alluded to, is whether by drinking or eating and uh, um, raw vegetables or drinking water or milk that um, has has the bacteria itself. So, for example, the milk is not well boiled, then we end up getting it. Then the direct contact together by bacteria, basically by handling um um in like tissues from an animal that is infected for example if you if 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 the, you have uh, cattle or cows and it's giving birth for example or it's having an abortion because uh for example it had um it had brucella abortus which made it like lose or abort its uh, calf so and then you handle the product uh, then that th then the bacteria can go through your mucus or skin and then that will be transmission via direct contact you can get it by inhalation basically of dust or wool from this um, um animal products and normally this would happen um from a veterinarian uh you can also get inhalation where like they are working in the laboratory with samples from such uh, animals that died from um this infection you can also get accidental inoculation, uh, like uh, laboratory workers getting the cultures of uh, this organism. So in, term, in terms of distribution, uh, Brucella basically affects um, most countries uh, worldwide, but there are places that are, it's very rare to get them. As you can see in the Americas, uh, they are very rare, and that can be attributed to, for example, their good uh, public health and also animal uh, inspection uh, kind of system where the animals are well treated the milk is well pasteurized but you'll find like um in parts of some parts of africa where this condition is endemic okay so the disease itself the pathophysiology is quite simple basically you get the brucella through whichever way we talked which, whichever whichever way we actually alluded to like inhalation like direct contact, whichever way, basically, you get the entry of the brucella. So, as we said earlier, they like the reticular endothelial system. So, basically, they will go to the regional lymph node around that area that it got inoculated. Then, from that that point, that lymph node area will get inflamed, you get lymphadenitis, and it also gets enlarged. But ultimately, the, the bacteria seeps through, eh? So it seeps through to the uh, systemic circulation, then you start having systemic signs and symptoms like fever and such kind of um, uh, manifestation. Um, some will remain, remain in the reticular endothelial system or migrate to other uh, lymph nodes. Uh, but also they normally like going to uh, organs which are rich in uh, this substance called erythriol. So this is a very important um, um, substance because um, this sort of like attracts the the bacteria so like in humans this is found in the synovial, synovial area or basically where you have the joints and that's why you normally end up having the inflammation mostly in the joints for animals the erythroid oil is found like in placenta like in cows eh? that's why uh, you find now the bacteria going to placenta causing things like abortion okay so the features that we expect, some of them I've already mentioned through the pathophysiology, like acute onset or uh, you end up having acute febrile infection and you've already talked about how you get your fever because of systemic signs, yeah? systemic um, seepage of the bacteria into blood. So you, you, you start having a bacteremia. So fever, chills, headaches. Uh, but more importantly, as you can see, you have arthralgia, arthritis, basically in specific areas like hip, knee, ankle joints, okay, because of um, the substance I told you that now likes going to the joint and then attracting the bacteria, which causes inflammation. Other than that, anorexia, weight loss, but you also most probably have enlargement of the lymph nodes. You can even have enlargement of other reticular endothelial uh, structures like split, spleen and liver. Depression sometimes would occur because of all this manner of symptoms occurring. And most of the time, um, diagnosis is a problem. So somebody will go with fever and joint pains and they'll mostly be treated for malaria, yet it is actually brucellosis. So in terms of diagnosis, um, 
uh, like first of all, history of contact with like animal or animal products is important. That will give you um an indication of what you're dealing with. Then, but the definitive kind of um, diagnosis isolation of uh, culture of blood or bone marrow, uh, so that you actually grow the the bacteria. That will actually now show definitively what we have. However, serology can be used, like serum agglutination tests. Uh, but this is not uh, definitive because of um, the sensitivity or specificity of the test where you, you end up having um, false positives. So you have to like do it together with other, other tests. So treatment is quite simple, uh, frankly speaking, even though now it is most of the time long, long term. Um, when I say long term, sometimes it might go to six weeks or above. But anyway, it is just uh, it is treated by antibiotics, and most Brucella species are actually sensitive to antibiotics. Therefore, um, they are normally treated with antibiotics. However, a combination of antibiotics is normally recommended because there are very high cases of relapse, and relapse have been attributed to the fact that actually the bacteria are not like it's not completely cleared during the treatment. So therefore. They try to combine um, the antibiotics so actually to see whether we're going to have enough um, enough clearance so that we don't have a relapse. So the common combination, for example, that is normally done is uh, giving doxycycline orally and streptomycin injection um, every every day for like two to three weeks. Uh, this is commonly effective. Others would go even to six weeks. Alternatively, doxycycline can also be given with rifampicin. It is also an effective regimen. However, if you have complicated form of brucellosis, then you might give a doxycycline, a uh, macrolide, like, uh, so you end up giving a uh, jetamacin, um, then you, you, you also give, um, sorry, an aminoglycoside, uh, gentamacin, and then rifampicin. So that, that, that is triple therapy, basically. So prevention and control, um, basically, as you've said, it is a zoonotic disease. Therefore, uh, people need to be educated on their interaction with animals and what they should do um, like when they interact with them. So treatment of infected animals, like if you've noticed, like your animals are uh, boating or they are uh, behaving in a certain uh, way, so they need to be tested and treated. Also boiling or pasteurizing milk or dairy products, uh, wearing of protective gear while dealing with them, with slaughtered uh, animals, or if it is in the laboratory, make sure you have protective gear. Uh, also proper disposal of aborted, aborted uh, fetus or placenta or, pro or, or tissue products from that animal is important and de disinfecting the area. And then importantly, infected animals should is be isolated uh, pending treatment <coughs> or um, vaccination of animals uh, should be actually done.